we needed to use a lot of computer animation. So when we were filming, we had a lot of guys falling on rocks. And these guys were battered and bruised after, you know, three, four days of shooting reenactments because they would run up the beach, you know, pretend that they were shot or just, I mean, it, it's very hard running on the Dieppe rocks. And uh, so we filmed them in different scenarios. And then um, when we got back, our, our CGI artist from uh, Block 4 in Toronto then took that footage and inserted explosions, inserted tanks, inserted smoke, inserted gunfire. And what I feel we do then is just give people a better representation of what it would have been like for these veterans who landed on Dieppe. There's a number of techniques we would use with the CGI. Um, there's a number of shots we lock off and we have guys, say, going up the beach. Um, and then we would put tennis balls on little sticks and they would represent, say, where tanks were. And so that we could clearly see where the guys, two things, the, the, the actors then knew where the tank was going to be placed. And secondly, the animators had references by the tennis ball to actually put the perspective, the right perspective of the tank in. So it's, it's you know, it, it was kind of funny just shooting it and guys were reacting. We had guys also, you know, pretending that they were being blown up by an explosion. So they would run across and then we would just shout something and they would jump up in the air and then the animators put an explosion. And a lot of times we would use real pyro in certain films, but we couldn't do that because of the rocks. If we actually used real pyro on the beach, um, the, the, the rocks could be used as shrapnel, just like it was on the day. So all the explosions had to be animated. Um, the other um, challenge we had was the secret commando unit, when it eventually got into the inner port and we're telling that story, um, the port now is DF-19, well, Dieppe 2012, where we had to make it look like Dieppe 1942. So the animators did a thing called rotoscoping. So we would have the actors move through um, the town and there's cars, there's women pushing baby carriages, there's all of the stuff that's, you know, the, the modern day signage and they had to go frame by frame and cut out the guys and then replace the background with um, with the F-1942. So we added blown up buildings and smoke and airplanes in the back and tanks and it's pretty extraordinary when you actually go from what we shot to what the results were. And some people look at the results and go, oh, the F's pretty empty there. No, it wasn't. Um, it, it's pretty spectacular. It's the first time I've gotten that much into what I would call green screen and, um, and kind of live action CGI. And oh, mentioning green screen, that's the third thing we did. Um, we had to do a lot of on location green screen. So we traveled with this, you know, 20 by 20 um, green screen, just a sheet that's green, and we would just duct tape it sometimes or staple it or put it around a frame and then we would have you know the actors do things in front. So you'll see a lot of shots within the show. Um, all the landing craft stuff we did in two locations and both of them are very unusual. Um, we were shooting in Dieppe and we just duct taped the green screen to a wall and had the French reenactors um, kneel down in front of it and pretend they're on the landing craft. So they're just going back and forth, back and forth. And the animators just brilliantly put them into the landing crafts. And we had to do that in England as well with the, sec the sequence with the Royal Marines. You'll see one big difference between the two. We, we, we kind of enhanced it a bit. We got better at it. <laughs> so the Royal Marines, we added water on the helmets and, it's, it, in, and shot it a bit better. And it just looked Look spectacular. I could, I still can't believe um, that they were just in front of a green screen in a back alley someplace in, you know, outside of London, um, and all of a sudden we transport them back into a landing craft in 1942. So technology really gave me the opportunity as a filmmaker to bring visually the story I wanted to bring, and we did it on a very low budget and uh, and just use our own creative ingenuity to bring it to life and just thank God that computer animation does what it does today. <laughs> but it really, I think, makes the film.